Hello everyone. Happy Friday. I'm John Lorden, your host for another episode of Brain Scratch. And today's Brain Scratch really takes me back to um, one of the core reasons why I started doing this show. I really wanted to look into um, different ways of looking into the world. I wanted to review um, theories that the official explanation just doesn't seem to make sense or hold up. And today's case is certainly one of those um, in, in both aspects. We've got uh, pretty much a conspiracy theorist, so just the very nature of the information that this man was putting out uh, is certainly interests me. But on top of that, we have a mysterious death. So today we are looking into the case of Max Spears. This is a nice photo of Max from an article at heavy.com. Once again, this is their kind of five fast facts article. I will have a link for it down below, um, but I'm gonna pretty much cover that as I go through the other articles. So I'm not going to cover this one uh, on its own, but you can click down below if you wanna check it out. Um, Max Spears was 39 years old, and essentially he's a conspiracy theorist um, which I know some people have weird connotations about that that term. I really don't and I know that I've been sent information and have done some research and it looks like a lot of people are actually trying to discredit that term. When they say conspiracy theorists, they want to put this image in your head of someone wearing a tinfoil hat. Um, and admittedly, sometimes when I look into, you know, I look into this type of information a lot. Some people have good information and some other people don't really have information that I feel holds up for um, resembling the truth. For example, I know in one uh, brain scratch I did before I mentioned Corey Good, who thinks he's some type of uh, international space traveler and he's met this race of bird-like aliens. Um, Corey's stories usually boil down to him referencing Star Trek and Star Wars regularly. Quite honestly, I don't buy a lot of the information that I get from someone like Corey Good. Max Spears is in a bit of a different boat, and it's strange because I really didn't know him before this news about his death has kicked around. It has certainly raised his level of exposure to the public in a huge way. There are many, many news articles being written about his death, and it's kind of interesting because they're coming several months after he died. He passed away, well, actually, that's the first bit of the mystery. If we do a Google search on when did Max Spears die, uh, it comes back with June 2016. And there was this weird trend that I was noticing when I was reading articles on this where some people said it was June, some people said it was July, but no one really had a firm date. Other people were just saying he died this past summer. Um, however, I do understand he died, I believe it is on July 16th, and that is information that came from an interview that his mother actually did. Um, so I think that that is pretty good information. But for so many articles being written about this guy, I'm really surprised at the fact that no one seems to be doing their homework to just firm up the information. I mean, you have every, pretty much every major publication you can think of online has written about this case and no one is doing anything more than just repeating the same few facts about this case over and over, which I think um, is kind of weird in one way. I mean, I've already, I'm already ready to put on my tinfoil hat and I'm starting to wonder why major media is covering this several months late and not in a complete fashion, but everyone is surely echoing this sentiment that, hey, here's a conspiracy theorist, might have been bumped off because of because of uh, some information that he was about to give out. Very, very strange. So let's get into the basics of Max Spears. Um, we have some information here on the truthdenied.com. Super soldier and UFO phenomenologist Max Spears was found dead in Warsaw, Poland over the summer and his death is cause for suspicion within the network of UFO researchers. Spears, 39, who is originally from England, texted his mother just days before he died. The message read, if anything happens to me, investigate. Uh, Spears, 39, originally from Canterbury, found dead in Poland. He had gone to the country to talk about conspiracy theories and UFOs. 
Medics ruled he died from natural causes despite no post-mortem. Yeah, I really find that interesting. Apparently, um, this is information according to his mother, he was staying with a woman that he was kind of friendly with but apparently didn't know all that well. Uh, this woman said he had been sick. Uh, he mentioned to his mother that he had been taking some antibiotics. The woman said that he threw up two liters of black liquid, and as a matter of fact, her carpet is still stained. Uh, so she called for emergency medical help. Um, I believe they actually called a doctor, and the doctor came out. Um, by the time the doctor got there, Max was already dead. Now, the woman, once again, this is according to his mother, would not let the doctor leave. She kept insisting that the doctor had to bring Max back to life. Um, now, if you know a little bit about some of the theories that Max has talked about, um, he really believes in extra-dimensional wars and entities and that there's a lot more going on than we can actually see. If you know a bit more of a popular conspiracy theorist named David Icke, um, Max's theology seems to blend in with David's quite a bit. So that gives you just a little bit of insight. Yes, you know, reptilian people are controlling the world um, and things even beyond that. Max really pushes more into dimensionality and wars that have been going on for 50,000 years, kind of race wars. Uh, some people might be offended at some of the information that he gives out, particularly about, you know, Nazis living on the moon and, um, you know, Jews torturing themselves to maintain control of their population. Uh, as a matter of fact, LGBT issues kind of come up in his stuff quite a bit. Um, he definitely wasn't shy with his words. I'm sure that there were some people that were probably offended by some of the messages that he was putting out. Um, but he was very strong in his convictions. He had very strong beliefs in what he was talking about. And I've watched many hours of Max since uh, just doing the, the information, the information gathering for this episode. Um, and I can tell you, he's pretty well spoken. I don't agree a whole lot with some of his perspectives, but I could tell that he was extremely passionate and knew about his topics very well. Um, as a matter of fact, That'll come into the story a, a little bit later as we learn about um, some of his final moments. But back to the room. So she won't let the doctor leave. The doctor calls the police. The police come out. Apparently that's enough that the doctor is then able to leave. And then the police leave. Everyone leaves and his body is still in her apartment apparently until the next morning. Very, very strange. And then on top of that, you have that it appears that there was no medical, medical examiner that did a whole lot of work. Um, Max's mom said she did get one page of notes just about the most basic things about the state that his body was in. And then it was just written on their natural death. Um, that is definitely not a full autopsy. So they have transported his body back to England and uh, she insisted that he get a full autopsy there. That has now been going on for months. Um, now, he actually is buried, but they pulled whatever, you know, blood samples, I'm sure they took hair samples, other biological samples from his body. They let the family have a closed service and he is indeed already buried. But the results from that still have not been given to his mother and we are now over three months, coming up on four months since his actual death. Certainly sounds like, um, I don't know if they're having trouble with their findings, but for, you know, comparing it in Poland where they were able to rule it a natural death in less than a day, um, now you have England looking into it for several months and still not having a firm conclusion. His mother thinks he may have made enemies who wanted him dead. Friends claimed he died in an apartment after he, quote, vomited a black liquid. His mother, Vanessa Bates, said, all I have is a death certificate from the Polish authorities that it was from natural causes, but no postmortem was done, so how can they tell that? They are also refusing to release any paperwork about it to me because, absurdly, I don't have his written permission. Some of the other topics that Max covered, uh, MK Ultra and occult practice within the elite and symbolism. Um, he actually seemed pretty big on symbolism. Again, this is an area where um, I personally don't put a lot of stock into symbolism, but 
he's one of those guys that loves to look at numbers. Uh, you know, the fact that 9-11 was on um, Neo's driver's license in the Matrix and stuff like that, he finds that uh, very important. The number 666, anywhere that pops up, you know, uh, is obviously some type of symbology or sign. He even has this thing where he takes the word Zion and he says, all you have to do is replace a letter and then flip the letters all around and you can get the word Nazi, which, um, I don't know. For symbolism, when you start replacing characters and things like that, I you really lose me really quickly. But that is the type of stuff, some of the type of stuff that he was into. How to recognize it on a global level. Uh, Max describes how the Matrix is set up as global propaganda institution, how the truth movements have been infiltrated, and how he connects with others who have been in the programs that he has been in too. Uh, worth noting, in that respect, I think uh, there's a project called Project Mannequin, I believe. Um, and this is kind of where he gets this super soldier title. Uh, he says that he was genetically selected and created and trained from a very young age to be some type of super soldier. Uh, he says he has memories even from before this life, spanning all the way back to the Atlantean period. He believes that he was part of... Uh, trying to protect Atlantis before the fall there. Um, he thinks that he has jumped to Mars. He believes that that was done at a facility that's in California at 999 Sepulveda Boulevard. I actually looked that up because I used to live out there and 999 Sepulveda Boulevard is extremely close to the airport. Um, personally, I think if the government was going to do anything with space travel, uh, they probably wouldn't put it that close to an airport where you're going to have tons of equipment and people monitoring the skies very regularly and consistently, not to mention all the people looking out the side of the plane windows as they're landing or taking off. But I don't know. According to him, 999 Sepulveda is where he did uh, one of these jumps. What I find interesting even about that story is when people ask him, well, what, what's Mars like? Um, he can't remember. He says that there is some type of amnesia device, but for some reason he's able to recall certain pieces, but not other pieces. So, you know, those types of things um, for someone that is kind of critically minded as myself, um, they're a bit tough to get over. So I don't necessarily know how much stock I put into his space travels him being this type of super soldier thing, um, but some of his other theories. The, the thing that really struck me about him is most of his other theories, I've actually heard from other places before, but he does a really good job of weaving those all together and speaking about them in a way that is a bit better than some of the other people I've seen. You have people like David Icke who have literally been talking about this stuff for decades, and Max was, if, if you look at that as a talent, Max was very close to being just as talented as David in terms of being able to speak in that way. He was involved with Project Mannequin in the UK, which is an extension of the Nazi Uberman Superman projects to create a warrior and a breeder. Uh, he had connections to Montauk and time manipulation projects. Now, that information, um, you know, talking about space and time and other dimensions is probably where I think that I personally found the most value when I was listening to his stuff. It's certainly the stuff that is the most interesting to me personally. Um, and it's stuff that's really hard to try to prove or refute because, you know, if you're talking about other dimensions, how do you, how do you really find evidence that can point you to, you know, hey, I'm slipping into a fourth dimension, watch, you know. I just had an experience over there, but you guys can't see it because you're stuck here in 3D and I just bumped into 4D. It's very interesting to me to think of other things working at a different level like that. But back to the mystery of what happened to Max. So if we jump over to this article on Yahoo News, we get a little bit more information. The mysterious death of paranormal investigator Max Spears has taken a darker turn with claims that he was investigating a circle of black magicians, including politicians, just before his death. Spears, who claimed to have survived a secret government super soldier program, was found dead this summer. Now his fiance, Sarah Adams, 31, has revealed that he was researching a circle of black magicians before his death. Adams said, we are used to getting death threats or stuff like that from people, but I think this time it seemed rather real. He'd been sent death threats saying that him and me were going to die. 
he was going to expose black magic. He was going to expose some of the stuff that he was working on involving political leaders and celebrities. He planned on coming back here, seeing his family, and I was going to have his child. He had messaged me hours before. It definitely couldn't have been suicide or something like that. Worth noting, he did leave behind two children already. Apparently, he was um, potentially talking about having a third with Sarah. So um, it is certainly tragic on that front. And of course, his mother uh, is trying to cope with all of this that's going on. On top of this huge media explosion that happened around this case several months after the fact. Yes, I'm sorry, I have to point it out again. I am completely shocked at how and why this became a story so much later than it actually occurred. It just, it really boggles my mind. Jumping over to Inquisitor.com, we get a little bit more detail. Max Spears' close friend, Miles Johnston, alleges that prior to his death, Spears took medication and had a negative reaction. Johnson told Project Camelot, a person has died here, and I don't think it's good enough that somebody who just took normal medication should end up vomiting, spewing black liquid, whatever it was. There are no reports indicating that Max Spears sought medical treatment for an allergic reaction or poisoning. Um, now, that might be true, but according to the information, once again, from his mother, it sounds like he actually had seen a doctor that he hadn't been feeling well for several days before this. And I did mention that he had antibiotics. I don't know if you can really get those without a prescription in Poland. I'm, I'm not certain. Um, but it did seem like he was seeking some type of help. But according to this article, specifically for some type of allergic reaction to the medication, he did not seek help for that. Instead, it's alleged that Polish investigators either aided in covering up Max Spears' murder or that they were simply inept. There was reportedly no autopsy performed on the UFO expert's body, which means that if he was poisoned, the evidence was overlooked because authorities weren't moved to thoroughly investigate. Now, it's, it's kind of weird that they keep keying him to being a UFO expert so strongly because of the four hours of his talks that I watched, I, I would estimate he talked maybe 10 to 15 minutes about things that I would consider to be in that arena. Um, but what's interesting about those four hours are Three of those hours were an interview that he did um, with the same person, and these interviews happened leading right up to his death. Uh, the last interview was only four days prior to him dying. And there is a strange thing that I noticed when I was watching these interviews. In the first one he does with this guy, um, he is very strong. His point of view is very um, direct. If he doesn't agree with you, he is very firm about that and he will be very clear about why he doesn't or he'll ask you for clarification. Um, in the second interview, it seemed a little more informal. I think he was in the backyard of the guy that was interviewing him. Uh, so it took a little bit of, of a turn, but it was strange because even in the second interview, it seemed to me that his words were starting to get a little mushy, that some words just weren't enunciated quite as clearly as previously. But like I said, maybe that was just him being more comfortable with this guy. But by the time we get to the third interview, something seriously has gone wrong here. Uh, the third interview is not videotaped, it's audio only. He winds up falling asleep at one point. Um, I think they actually suspend the interview three separate times if I heard it correctly. Definitely two times, but I think there's another time early on that there was kind of cleverly edited. Um, and there's moments where people that are in the room with him while he's being interviewed are reminding him to breathe. Um, and after he does, I think he takes a nap or something in the middle of the interview, they encourage him to get on a trampoline to try to help wake him up. And they actually do have some video footage of that. Here, let me uh, run a little bit of that for you. Here. Um, and then basically this. It was just a very, very odd interview. Um, the interviewer is actually getting frustrated with Max at several points. Um, quite honestly, if I had done that interview, I would have probably never released it. I might have sent it to his mother. Um, it just, it wasn't very valuable. It definitely wasn't the same Max that was interviewed the first two times. The information is extremely jumbled. Max seems to be losing his train of thought. 
I don't know what why they're reminding him to breathe at a few points in there. It kind of kind of freaks me out a little bit to actually listen to it. Um, but I will have the link to it down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. Um, I really don't know what to make out of it, but we do have some more detail about it here. Over to dailymail.co.uk, a British conspiracy theorist who died in mysterious circumstances in Poland said he felt like his face was on fire and his throat was being throttled in a haunting final interview just four days earlier. In his last interview, he told Alexander Berdowitz that he was seriously ill as he mumbled, fell asleep, and frequently forgot what he was saying. Now, one theory that kind of coincides with his belief structure um, is that he might have been being psychologically attacked. As a matter of fact, the guy interviewing him seems to suggest that at several points, saying, you know, something's going on with you. Uh, are you okay? It seems like uh, you might be being attacked again. So know that at least from his belief structure, um, that might have been a cause for what he was facing. It, are there other theories to that? Yeah, I mean, certainly if, if you want to get more practical, um, people might think maybe he was being poisoned while he was out there. Um, I don't know if there was someone that would want to harm him that he thought uh, was a friend of his that maybe he was close to for the several days that he was out there that could be doing something along those lines. Uh, if he wasn't being slowly poisoned, was he potentially using some type of recreational drug? Um, this, this third interview, when I was listening to it, uh, it reminded me of um, someone that would seem like they are extremely drunk really, really late at night still trying to talk to someone while they're passing out. I mean, it's, it's literally that bad. Uh, is there other things that could cause that? Certainly, I'm sure that if you were abusing Valium, um, I've seen footage of people that are shooting up on heroin that it kind of reminded me of a little bit too, although I think that that would have knocked out most of his ability to speak, unless he had a high tolerance or something along those lines. I don't know. Um, there's certainly a few different angles on what could have been affecting him, but in that third interview, something was definitely affecting him. And then going into four days later, he's dealing with some type of issue where he's taking antibiotics. He throws up a bunch of black liquid. Um, I looked into that a little bit, and the only thing I could really find on throwing up black liquid is that's usually an indicator that there is blood somehow getting into your stomach. Some people note that sometimes the black liquid could even look like coffee grounds if the blood has been in your stomach for a good enough amount of time. Um, I don't know if this guy might have had some type of, I mean, it would have to be a serious ulcer uh, of some kind, but that's the only thing I've really been able to find with black liquid is it's usually an indicator that there's blood in your stomach. Once again, does that point to potential poisoning, either long-term or just some type of big single dose? I think there's a possibility. Jumping over to maxspears.com now, um, here is an announcement that was actually posted on July 12th, 2016, only a couple days before he died. I'm opening this blog so I can write and get clear, concise information across to those who resonate with my thinking and experiences. We can't be stopped now, and I'm going to go into considerably more detail than I ever would or could on Facebook. So here he's being very clear, um, and his mom spoke to this as well, that when they had spoken recently, he was talking about getting frustrated that he couldn't exactly name names, that people were advising him regularly, look, you can talk about these things, you can put you know, the theories and concepts out there, but as soon as you start giving out real names, you know, you're, you're gonna get in trouble, essentially. So I think this blog might have been his avenue to try to start doing that, because um, apparently he felt like if he couldn't put names to all of this, that what good was his research? What was he doing all this work for? Unfortunately, we won't know. Now, this blog seems to have been taken over by someone. It's kind of being turned into a memorial. On the 20th of July, it looks like someone reposted a bunch of writing from him. I think that they were probably posts that were originally on Facebook, but uh, now they're also here. So if you do want to learn more about Max and his thoughts, uh, you can certainly come to maxspears.com and jump in. 
Now, his mother said she did close the original GoFundMe after feeling like she was getting abusive comments there. Uh, someone else, Tajinder Gill, hope I'm saying that name right, um, has recreated a GoFundMe for his memorial service, uh, and it apparently does have the blessing of his mother. So I will have a link to this in the comment box below if you are so moved to donate to this. Please, please do. Outside of that, there is also a petition, autopsy slash inquest for Max Spears. If anything happens to me, investigate. And uh, essentially this is asking Polish authorities to look into this affair a bit more. It's going to be delivered to the chief inspector, assuming that it gets enough signatures. Um, another thing that was interesting was apparently his mother was contacted by the Polish authorities and they were saying that unless she could provide them with a thousand dollars that they were going to close or the autopsy results that they were going to close the case out completely um, which really sucks because there's nothing she can do to speed up the autopsy results obviously she doesn't have them yet so she can't provide that uh, I don't know if she did provide that thousand dollars to keep that investigation open or I, honestly I don't know how she's handling any of this but I'm sure it's very very tough the information that I got specifically from his mother did come from the Richie Allen show, so I'm going to have a link to this particular episode in the description box below. I've listened to Richie Allen stuff here and there. He's part of the David Icke network as well. Um, I like him as a host. I think he does a really good job, and he has a really good touch for handling sensitive situations, like speaking to the mother of someone that had just died. So. Um, I definitely appreciated his approach and quite honestly some of the best information I got in terms of having the actual date and some of the other circumstances around what happened to Max came from this so I definitely wanted to point you guys in that direction so you could uh, research it for yourself as well. Well brain scratchers this is another one of those um, I almost feel like it reminds me of the John Lang one uh, you know, it's, it's very strange when someone this young, 39 years old, a guy that was seemingly in pretty good shape, um, dies in a strange manner like this. But the way the Polish authorities kind of handled it seems even stranger to me. Uh, and just to put a little question in everyone's head about this media coverage that has happened on this, I'm almost wondering, is this something that uh, is supposed to scare off other potential conspiracy theorists? Is, was there, if there is, if this world does work like Max thinks that it worked, did someone make a call from up above and say, hey, you know that story about that uh, conspiracy theorist? Let's make sure that everyone sees that. Because I got to tell you, I was pretty surprised when uh, my wife came walking down here. I was watching one of Max's speeches and she's like, oh, isn't that the guy that uh, just died, the conspiracy theory guy? She's, I'm, I'm definitely looking into information like that. Um, you know, she's just reading the regular news most of the time. So for her to have been to, exposed to that, I was kind of blown away. Is Max right? Is there something else going on behind the scenes here that uh, a lot of us aren't paying attention to? If you are into uh, David Icke or uh, conspiracy theories along that nature, I suggest you definitely check out some of Max's work. Luckily, he left a lot of information behind. He was starting to get a bit popular. Um, it seems like he did a lot of podcast interviews and things of that nature, so you could really dive in and learn a lot of his perspective. There's just a ton of information out there. But outside of that, I do hope that the mystery of his murder or natural death, we don't know which it is yet, um, I do hope that a light gets shined on that so that his family can grieve and move forward from whatever happened to this son, uh, father, and uh, potentially new husband. Uh, it's just, it's, it's pretty tragic. If he was indeed silenced, I think it's pretty sad that uh, there are people out there that are threatened by information. But in my experience, there does appear to be people that are certainly threatened by particularly true information. So it'll be interesting to see how this case unfolds. And if there are any new developments, I will certainly keep you guys updated. Thank you so much for joining me here on today's Brain Scratch. I will catch you on the next show on the Lord and Arts channel. Have a great weekend.